Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Katie Frey, the acclaimed makeup department head whose newest project is the Paramount Plus series, The Offer, about the making of The Godfather. Katie, I love the show so much. I love The Godfather. It's such a great era, I feel like, uh, just in general, and, and there's no shortage of iconic real-life figures for you to recreate on screen. I would love to talk to all about that, but just going in, I guess, like the 30,000-foot view, like what was your initial approach and you know goals with the makeup on the series? I mean, when I first got the call about it, I was like, wow, this is like, it first of all was like, wow, this is amazing. And then it was like, oh my God, there is so much to go into, like the development of the, the produce, like, I mean, just our ruddy story himself with everything that he came across and, and having to design each character carefully with the correct looks for the for what they were doing was just amazing. And then having to recreate some of the looks from the original movie was like, wow, I've got to make this perfect. We've got to like, and then we're doing essence of like, Robert, we've got Robert Redford and you've got all these different Frank Sinatra and these iconic people coming through and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm so scared, but it's so exciting. So that was, yeah, it was a big challenge and a great fun. You, you mentioned like having those little things. I think that one of the things I really love about the series is like you mentioned Robert Redford. He just pops in uh, on the set of Butch and Sunday. Never see him again, right? And it's just like yeah. you have to get that look really right. It's I know like, Billy Magnuson plays uh, Redford, right? And it's just it's yeah. like a great, I, I didn't even recognize him, honestly. And he is a very recognizable actor, I feel like. So like those kind of things, like, I, I mean, can you talk about that? Like taking, like he's only in like one scene basically and having to do that so carefully and, and repeating that over and over again. It's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, the people that we had to do every day, like Miles and people, we've got to, you've obviously got to develop those characters over a long arc of time. And then you've got the, the, the very quick cameo parts of the very big actors that are playing these cameo parts that are very important to the show and the movie, you know, the, the, you know, the project. And we did to get that perfect was just it was so scary but amazing at every point you just got to get the essence and you've got to know that you've got the exact right colors and the palette right and just once you get the actor's face so you know who's playing so, um, so you know each time you get the each day you get a new character and sometimes they cast them such last minute that we end up thinking okay right we need a moustache. He hasn't got that. We've got a bit of hair here. We've got a bit of hair here. And which bit can we blend together to make it all come in with the right shading and contours to create those characters? So, yeah. it, it's, it's wonderful stuff. So imagine like all the, I wanted to kind of go through a few of these transformations. When I was like blown away by true, and they're all incredible. So I don't want to like, but the one I was like, <laughs> so I cannot believe was uh, Justin Chambers plays Marlon Brando. And it's re re remarkable. I've watched Grey's Anatomy. We've, I've watched like 20 seasons of it. I yeah. would have never in a million years said like, Justin Chambers, yes, you look like Marlon Brando. But then in the show, I was like, wow, he really looks like him. And not only that, but you get him, obviously have to make him look like Don Corleone, even though there's not recreating specific scenes from The Godfather that are in production and all these different things. Uh, where do you start with that when just, it's, it's, I mean, it's a remarkable look. I just love it so much. First of all, before we knew it was Justin Chambers playing the, the act, you know, we didn't know who they were going to cast. So we we're like, please let it be someone that's going to be open to everything we want to do, you know. And Justin was amazing. He was came in just so open to exploring how to push himself as far as he could to be, you know, um, Marlon Brando. And obviously we start off with Marlon Brando as himself and then we turn him into the Dom. So I did a lot of research on obviously the original Dick Smith's makeups and every process that we could find of what everything he, he did. And I've researched it for years because it's like one of your iconic things as a makeup artist growing up. So it was scary, amazing and fun, but we used a lot of his techniques um, and used the new products that we, we have today that he didn't have. So we used, we did the same thing with the dental plumpers. We, we cast his teeth. We did vacuum forms instead of he used metal and little dental areas. And we used like the Visalign and then we added, we sculpted and made little plumpers to go inside to extend his jaw down. And then we did the old age stipples, but we used more like silicon, very natural transfers that were much easier for the skin to take on and off. And Justin was so pleased with getting into character and he was amazing to work with doing it. It was, and like just the contours and the shading, exactly the same thing, working with the lighting. 
and it was it was really fun to do it was a great fun yeah it's really fun to watch I like I said I just I was remarkable <laughs> about that that you mentioned like the other thing I was thinking of watching it too is like obviously so it's set in the 70s like late 70s and they're doing production on the movie in the late 70s but the movie takes place in the 40s right so hey. and you're doing makeup <laughs> on the production to make it look like the I was just like I was trying to wrap my head around that and I guess how did you guys do that? like kind of be like I mean, oh, we're in the 70s and now we have to go back to the 40s and so like, we had a that? lot of organization <laughs> and that was the, I mean that was the, such a fun thing but you have to really show the difference in the time because otherwise you it all blends in like it's very easy for people to blend in so it was very fun to show the characters in the, the show like we 1940s we made sure they kept the makeup very similar to how they did in the real movie and kept it a little heavier and just really kept that very good feel of what it was and then the 70s just trying to make them look real people because they're meant to be real everyday life but I mean we had boxes and boxes of hundreds of boxes of sideburns for all of the extras that we made on site ourselves and just each day that person needs more that needs more hair you know and we'd be throwing it out everywhere and it was just, it was great. I mean, my team loved it because it's it's not often that you're allowed to play and go that far. So it was great. It's, it's really cool. I, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, like uh, about the looking back at the original Marlon Brand, like the makeup from the Godfather. I mean, how many times did you have to, like, did you watch the Godfather before do, or doing this? Oh, like, God, yeah. like <laughs> I mean, we watched the Godfather and everything about the making of the Godfather. And I watched the um, Robert Evans interviews and it was so much fun researching those characters and Al Reddy and uh, there was just so many there's so much on YouTube now which is so amazing and we just got I mean yeah I rewatched The Godfather which obviously is like such an amazing iconic movie and so I uh, yeah I, we rewatched that I sat down with the hair and the makeup and the costumes and we just went through every book every bit of research we could find every behind the scenes pictures which is the most important thing because it's the remake of behind the scenes which is not always so much documentation on that so we really pushed ourselves as much as we could to get every single mobster character, every picture and line them up with the real people and just use the essence to develop them together. So, Can you talk a little about, I wanted to, you know, you mentioned Al Ruddy, Miles plays Al Ruddy. It's not, not as like a, I would say not as like a, a bold transformation as like Marlon Brando or like Justin Chambers or like, yeah. you know, Giovanni Ravisi, but he obviously is not, does not look like Al Ruddy. But then again, watching it, I was like, oh, you really do like the, the way you make him look. And especially at the end of the series, I think they show like a real version of, you know, like a real photo of Al Ruddy, yeah. which is, um, and he looks like, it's like a great, again, another great transformation, but it's very, it's much more, I don't know if subtle is the right subtle. word, but it's obviously like, there's not as much, you know, it's not as big, let's say as Marlon Brando one. So I was like, how did you guys talk about like how to make Al Miles look like Al Ruddy, I guess? Well, Miles came in and he's never really had his hair that long. So he was always a bit like, oh, a bit conscious, self-conscious of it. Start with. And we had to push him into this, like, you got to be like this sexy Elvis style of like character. And he, I mean, the sideburns, he, once the sideburns were on, he felt amazing. He loved it. Like he didn't like his hair all buffy without the sideburns because it, it needs that to push his look. And he was, you know, he was great. But I mean, he gets very hot, very red and we, you know, making sure he doesn't flush through any scenes it's like in keeping his makeup very together through his performance and then letting it go when we need it to you know so using his own you know colorings and whatever to come through when he's getting angry and stressed and the sweat and stuff we you know it's very careful with him because he's in almost in every he's almost in everything yeah so keeping him maintained throughout it's like I mean it's a pleasure but it's just you've got to just keep it very together you know right the sideburns I would make a new pair I'd have a new pair of sideburns for each episode so they didn't become too changing throughout because I mean a few heads different you're gonna for me I had noticed but I mean you know not everyone would but I you know <laughs> so it's you know it's, it's just maintaining and he's he's a great person you know and you don't know what you're going to get every day like the, he got glitter on his face from a birthday card one day and you're taking off with sellotape you know there's always, <laughs> there's always something that's going to happen but it's fun yeah just remarkable you mentioned uh, the hair I feel like of, of all the actors the uh, Giovanni Ravisi's transformation from a hair perspective was it's completely uh wild because obviously Joe Colombo is bald or has like a comb over and, and Giovanni Ravisi does yeah. not I, so <laughs> I guess I mean, can you talk about that again Joe Colombo not necessarily as maybe as famous as like a Marlon Brando or whatever for, for a layman, but obviously it was a very prominent figure in, in that time period and, and very well covered. So they obviously had like a lot of, I'm sure archival footage and, and photos oh. of him, but can you talk about like that transformation and making oh. Giovanni look like him? 
he was the, the biggest pleasure to work with. Like he came in and said, I want to be this man. And he was already, his voice is in character. And he's like, I want to be this person. I want to be this. And I want to be like, he said, I want to get rid of my hair. And the director's going, oh, I don't know about that. It's a bit scary. Like, we don't want to go too far. And I'm like, no, trust us. Let's go for it. And I work in England a lot with, we do hair and makeup. So me and the hair department work very closely together. And it's almost like a crossover because you're taking off a lot of, like his shaving, which is us. And then it, but so we worked together, me and Renee, and we came up with like, we did a bit by bit, like taking off a little bit of hair, a little bit more until we got the whole bit gone. And Giovanni's like, more, more. And then we, I said, but we need to keep this front piece because if we don't keep this front piece, we're going to have, we, we have, you know, that problem of lace that keep is something that's always a nightmare and you don't want that. So, I was like, why don't we just keep this little tiny piece and then we shave this. So he walked around looking crazy for months. He went into a nail salon and they were laughing at his hair because he forgot to wear his hat. It's like, so we put in this little tiny hair piece that just sits in there and I did it every day. We combed it over, colored everything in. So there was no difference in the hair color, you know, because obviously shaving a piece of skin has never seen the day of light. So you got a lot of you know, difference. And, and then we just gave him a really real broken down look, very similar to the mob, the real character. He had his nails buffed every day and we kept everything clean. We used the real brick, real cream, uh, which he bought in. He was like, this is what they used. I've know what he used. So we were like, yeah. So together it was a real a transformation of character with developing with him and so much fun. I love hearing and that because I, I love how much, I love hearing how all the actors are like so heavily involved in, in, in the collaboration with you. I think that's so, it's so cool. And it like, I like this show, I really enjoyed. It. And I think you could tell from the performances that everybody's really committed. Yeah. Uh, one la- not to continue to make this about, oh my gosh, tell me about this other transformation, but oh, it's yes. just so great. The, Matthew Good as Robert Evans, I love. Oh. Obviously it's such a, it's a wonderful performance. He's so funny. He gets the voice, I think incredibly well. Uh, and I guess, can you talk a little about that uh, that make that transformation? Because again, it obviously looks he looks very much like Robert Evans, but I, I think that's a, a remarkable performance, and the makeup really helps. Yeah, we were going to use contact lenses. We went away from that because we didn't want his eyes to be distracted. On you know, and lots of the producers said that with contact lenses you can lose that performance. And Matthew's such an amazing actor. We said no, let's go with his performance and go for what he feels is going to be the rest thing. So. I mean, Matthew just came in the energy that he needed to be. He was just like full force. Like he has been rehearsing this for months and amazing. Like we just had to basically strip him off the first day and cover him in fake tan. <laughs> first of all, the first day you come in, I'm like, take your clothes off, fake tan. We got to get your body covered because there were scenes coming up where we're going to see everything. And then we, we throughout filming, we'd send him off for a spray tan now and again. And, you know, everything is very much the very subtle details with with that character. And obviously, as he deteriorates with his crazy drug binges and stuff, we, you know, he gets more exhausted, less shaved and more just unkept. And then we bring him back again to the, the man that shows up at the end as they making an amazing movie. And, and Matthew is so fun to work with. And he, you know, it's just that it's a lot of fake tan. <laughs> It's amazing. I, I, like I said, I could literally go through honestly every single character. It's so much fun. I, I think it's so great. But I didn't want to ask you two more, two more though. No, no, no. no. I'm happy. I, I like, love it. I, I, so Juno Temple is Betty McCart. Again, another person that maybe uh, you know behind the scenes a little bit, not as well known. But I love that look for her, especially because she's so. I mean, Juno Temple is like I feel like everywhere, so people know what she looks like. But I think it does a great. It's very not as like I said, not as broadly transformative as like a Justin Chambers is Marlon Brando, but still like looks different yeah. enough and looks very much like the real Benny McCart as it turns out, and as you see at the end. So I guess, can you talk about like working with her and making those, the subtle makeup choices for her that fit with the character? Yeah, she was, um, I mean, she's lovely, beautiful, beautiful person to work with. Um, she was also very keen on just being like the real businesswoman, like I'm sassy, I'm a woman. So we developed her very much on that type of look. Like she had a lipstick, but it wasn't, nothing's always perfect, but it's there and she's always, presented herself and then the days got away with her and she's carried on so 
we and she, you know such beautiful colors used all the palettes and the references of the vogues and all the 70s the makeup lines and 60s and obviously like, some of them we kept more of the 60s feel coming in because it was such on the cusp of the 60s to 70s so we used a lot of like some people would still have their old like thing they didn't obviously replenish everything and then as we got on to like the oscars time that like, they've got themselves a bit more sassed up you know so it was yeah it's just so much fun Fun, like just creating those sockets, the lash, you know, creating the right amount of lashes and eyeliner. It was just beautiful. Um, when make. you're when you're doing this, like, I mean, how how much of a challenge is it to find like the materials? I mean, like, it sounds like so much research, especially for this, where you like you said you have there's so many extras and so many different things, and it's a yeah. period production, obviously. Like, how much is a challenge to find like the what you're looking for? I guess. Um, luckily it's not so far back that it becomes really difficult, but like with Betty, there wasn't as much reference to her real, the real person, because they, I don't think the women were photographed as much because she wasn't such a big role with, in the movie, as they say, even though she did an amazing mm-hmm. thing. Um, so it wasn't so easy to, like, if we were struggling with good pictures of the real people, we normally find them when they're a bit older. So we're trying to make younger versions of them. So we were trying to take essences as we could from the people, their personalities, and then develop it all into Juno Temple as Betty Metcalf. So, right. It's really great. You Like, was there, I mean, like, was there a most challenging thing for you during the, like what were I mean like probably one of them maybe we talked about but if not like what was like what was the biggest challenge for you here I mean for me every day is just making sure everybody on the team is working and happy like to me it's a daily thing to make sure everybody has that passion for the show and you've got your whole team behind you because otherwise if they're not working with you you've got no help so it's like a real team effort of getting everybody involved I mean and each time you've got a new design coming in you've got you still got the set running with all these new characters coming through so it's it's about being just organized the amount of times we sit there all on set together all like sharing images and like what about this what about that as soon as we hear who's cast for something it's it's a fun thing to do you're like oh yeah and then this reference and that reference and everybody together sheds all sends each other's photos and we we develop these amazing things together It's, it's a real collaboration yeah, it's amazing. I think the work is so great. Uh, Katie Frey, who's the makeup department head on the offer on Paramount Plus right now. I highly recommend the show. And uh, yeah, your work in this is awesome. So thank you. For thank you. Time. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.